on the next Audiobook Lovin' Podcast. Narrator Liam DeCosimo hangs out with us as we discuss becoming a narrator, music, the romance genre, and much more. I'm sure everybody would love to have Brad Pitt or Ryan Reynolds or somebody read a book to them. Hugh Jackman, right? I think we'd all love Hugh Jackman to read a book to us. Uh, but I think that there's there's somewhat of a pedestal that sometimes we put these people on. And I feel like my voice kind of has that even playing field where I feel familiar mm-hmm. to almost anybody. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying before we started officially recording, I was nervous because we've never spoken before like this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's a man. I mean, I'm going to fuck this up. Um, <laughs> but as soon as we started chit-chatting, I'm like, it was, uh, you know, the voice, but also you do have this energy of like, hey, we've been friends for like years. I'm like, oh, yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I strive for that because so much of my life, whether I was working sales positions or, you know, retail or even just being in a band, because you need to convey a certain amount of openness, but still confident, right? You're confident mm-hmm. in what you do, but you want to be open and welcoming to people. Because, you know, whether we were walking the lines at Warp Tour, trying to get people to, you know, stand at our stage and watch our band or, you know, buy a CD in the lines, or, you know, we used to walk the malls the shopping malls uh in cities before we would play the show that night and just walk up to kids and go hey we're in a band here's a pair of headphones do you want to listen to us and you know if they liked it we're like hey we're playing a show tonight if you'd like to come out so we would try to kind of build up an audience for each city that we went to and you know when you put yourself in that what would typically be a very awkward position Mm -hmm. so frequently i mean we did that for years and years it makes almost any conversation easy to walk into Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's important, I think, especially even now with social media, where a couple of years ago, we didn't know who the narrators were, we had, didn't have any of that connection. And now, fast forward, and we can DM you if you're on social media, yeah. and things like that, and, and let you know how awesome this book was, and how much we loved you guys, and uh, stuff where you guys are more accessible. So I think that's also a perk and a, a bonus on, on listeners' ends. And I hope that you guys like that too, you know? Oh, 100%. I mean, when... You know, Tim and I had started, um, the, you know, the band that we were in, we had started in 2006. And him and I had done bands all the way back into the 90s. Not together, but, you know, we'd both been in separate bands. And then, you know, our social circle kind of collided. And that's how him and I uh, became friends. But it was, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, as you're, uh, how do I put it? You know, like as you're, um, you know, as you've developed as a musician, as you've developed as an individual, once you got to things like MySpace and, you know, eventually Facebook, and I know right, I'm dating myself there. I, I, I used to have an account. <laughs> oh, I, I loved MySpace. That's why I, I if, for anybody that follows me on Facebook, they know mm. I almost never post unless it's something that is being simultaneously posted through my Twitter or Instagram because I dislike Facebook. I'm sorry. I have never been a fan of Facebook, but I adored MySpace. I loved the interface. Mm-hmm. I loved the, the people that I was friends with on there. It was just such such an easy platform to use. Uh, so, you know, w- once we had MySpace and then, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, there were so many different ways to connect to people globally, not just on a local level. Mm-hmm. I loved that. I mean, on the flip side, unfortunately opinions are like assholes everybody has one yep. so you do run into a lot of a lot of negativity but you know you got that block button for a reason if somebody's popping up in your timeline and you don't care for what they're saying go ahead and block them mm-hmm. yeah i just use the, the the ball on my mouse and that's i think that's why it was invented to scroll on by yeah, um, <laughs> because it's true and i've used that exact same analogy of like you know like same thing like reviews their opinions and like opinions you know everybody has one like i mean they are assholes so Yep. Yep. And so there's always good with bad, but you know, we, I try not to let one bad apple ruin the rest of it. So. No, for sure. I mean, I would- join the fun and listen to the entire episode on Friday, February 19th, wherever podcasts are available, including our website, Viviana Enchantress of Books. Our Patreon members will receive early access and special exclusive content. <laughs>